people have told me that they're curious about the amount of foam we use as obstacles here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Over the course of our nine-year history, we've gone through 30 tractor-trailer loads full of foam. And this particular season, we actually bought more foam than we ever had before. We picked up 17 and a half thousand cubic feet of foam. And we're now worried that it's gonna run out. Because this year on Canada's Worst Driver, the worst drivers ever have returned. We started off with nine of them. But now that we've made it to this, our second last show of the season, only four folks are left. Sly from season seven, who honestly doesn't seem to be improving no matter how much we teach him. What is going on that I always keep on screwing up? We also have Michael from season two, who is definitely getting better. What the hey? But often has serious mishaps. Break, 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 break. Like hitting the gas pedal instead of the brake. I want to know what I did wrong there. Then there's Dale from season six who is so unfocused. She asked our therapist, Shamala Kiru, to help with her focus. Yeah, that definitely helped. And the final remaining driver is Kevin from season eight. Kevin has pledged to quit driving for the rest of his life if our rehab center experts tell him he should. Ah. That's not how I wanted that to go. To determine which three of those four folks will be driving in our next and final episode, they'll each be behind the wheel today, participating in a series of three driving challenges that will be using some of our remaining foam as obstacles. And we're not just casually observing them during these challenges. We're pitting them against one another to see which one of them is deserving of the title. Canada's worst driver ever! Which is why I'm up here. Being down there is just way too dangerous. Highly dangerous, very difficult stunt driving successfully requires a keen understanding of what our experts call vehicle dynamics. If you understand how weight shifts when you turn the wheel suddenly, you can make a car do things it was never supposed to do, like spin perfectly around. Can Canada's worst drivers ever master a high-speed spin-out technique that's made literally millions of dollars for Hollywood stunt drivers? We're about to find out. This particular technique involves more than just a weight shift and sudden steering. It also requires pulling the handbrake at exactly the right moment. Our high-performance driving instructor, Philippe Letourneau, will show the bad drivers how it's done. First, Philippe accelerates up to 40 kilometers an hour. Then... I need some weight at the front, so I let go of the gas. Letting go of the gas slows the car down, shifting its weight forward while the rear end gets lighter. I go left, I go right. Next, Philippe creates a pendulum effect by suddenly going left, then suddenly right. Pull the e-brake. Pulling the emergency brake locks up the rear wheels. Pull the e-brake. And that causes the spin out. And we're out of here. Right. I might have a little trouble with this. Why? Oh, very simple. I'm not used to handbrakes. When all of Canada's worst drivers ever get used to doing a handbrake turn... Oh! Nice! 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 Yes! It's time for the challenge. Come on, come on. <laughs> huh? For the challenge, Drivers will come down this straightaway and do the maneuver in a confined space around a foam figure of their loved one. 
And the vehicle they'll be driving will be our now battered Camaro, which had a brand new high performance handbrake installed just this morning. The handbrake here is called a cutter handbrake. Watch this. It, uh, it wants to bounce back. Your normal handbrake at home has a ratchet system that when you pull it up, it locks it in place. And what you're pulling tight when you do that is a cable. When you pull a cutter handbrake, hydraulic fluid gets pumped through a tube. That fluid then pushes against pads that push against the vehicle's rear brakes, making the wheels stop turning. Why do we have it in this car? Well, I'll tell you the truth now. We were practicing with the Camaro's original cable handbrake, and we kind of broke it. So uh, we put the cutter in because it was the only one we had available. True car fact for you. Get up to 40K an hour. Hand is on the brake. Looking where I want to go. Around, around. <laughs> and then in drive and get out of here. This is a classy maneuver. Can Canada's worst drivers ever figure out how to do this classy maneuver? We're about to find out. Sly is up first. Sly like the... 180. <laughs> Sly's brother-in-law, Fred, enjoys Sly's deep thoughts. You know that 180s aren't sly at all, right? Like foxes are sly, that's why that saying works. Sly like the fox. Oh, yes. Sly like the? Oh, I still like 180. Sly, like the 180. So far in rehab, Sly has only passed three challenges. Make that four! Holy cow. Sly? has a rare reason to celebrate. Yeah! Well, Sly, you cleared the ground. On Kevin's first run. He stays on the gas during the maneuver, which doesn't lighten the car's rear end enough to allow it to fully swing around. Whoa, almost, 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 almost. Kevin's boyfriend, Lenny, is used to him almost not crashing. If I hadn't hit that wall, uh -huh. no problem. On his second run, do you think his pedal control improves? Oh. It's actually worse. I did not let off the gas my first two attempts. You know what we here at the rehab center call it when you're giving a vehicle gas and trying to brake simultaneously? We call it really bad driving. Drivers are supposed to improve with each attempt. That's funny. But Kevin's final run is his worst. Oh. Ever. Another close one. No, it wasn't close at all. Come on. Oh. Kevin really needs to step up his game. You got a lot riding on this, man. You're never going to drive again if you get named Canada's worst driver. I know. Ever. When we come back, Michael and Dale run through our handbrake challenge. You didn't even pull up on your brake. Canada's worst drivers ever have learned how to do a forward handbrake turn. Nice. Yes. Now they're being tested on that skill under the watchful eye of our experts. Alongside Philippe and Shamala is our head instructor, Tim Danter, and our legal expert, Cam Woolley, who warns against doing this maneuver in public. Your vehicle can be impounded for seven days in the spot under stunt driving legislation. Michael could easily explain the physics behind the pendulum effect, but is it something he can do? <laughs> Michael's best friend, Eric, is a good influence on him. By George, I think I got it. For a few days now, Dale has been threatening to leave rehab. 
I, I've had it. I'm I'm done. I am done. I'm leaving. Just need to get out of here. I've had it. Dale's nephew, Danny, is hearing this a lot lately. Here, there's so much stress. You can go whenever you're ready. Dale is going in our Honda Civic because its cable handbrake is easier to pull than our hydraulic handbrake. But she hits the foot brake. You didn't even pull up on your brake. To me, it doesn't, it looks like she's not present at all in the car. Yeah, but she's driving on public roads. Dale, before you make this run, are you absolutely ready to go? She must be ready because she's gone. Is she focused enough to not hit the foot brake this time? Guess where your foot went? Up to the brake. Yep, it did. Did it? I have to try this again on a new day. I just... I, the, no, no, the, today's the day. Where these things, these driving mishaps never happen when you want them to. I know. I guess the question I, is, why aren't you focused right now? This I is all you're doing. I don't know, because I have no clue. If you could answer that question for me, then you'd be having the mystery of life, because I don't know. Are you I following the steps that Shamla told you to focus? It's... Get ready. Every time before you go, I say, go when you're ready. So get ready. I don't know why I'm not focusing. Are you trying to focus? Well, no. Well, maybe that's why you're not focusing. Wait a sec. Am I now starting to try to make Dale make sense? That makes no sense. Why are they making me do it when I'm not confident? Do every single thing you need to do to focus, Dale. And you do not have to go until you're absolutely ready. Okay. This time, Dale sits still without speaking for so long. I'm not sure if she's focusing or passing out. I've heard that the Hubble telescope takes a long time to focus. I think Dale takes longer. After eight full minutes of focusing, Dale focuses on finding something to blame her bad driving on. I can't see the speedometer because the sun's in my eyes, but I'm still gonna try it. That's brave of you. You could also pull down the sun visor. Okay, thank you. So focused on the task at hand, she forgot the existence of a sun visor. I guess that happens to samurai warriors and uh, Buddhist meditators and... Uh... Nah, just Dale. With her focus fully focused, Dale goes... with the car still in park. When it's in gear, Dale still can't drive. Maybe too much focus? Yeah. Dale failed. But at least she didn't quit. No, I didn't quit. I wouldn't quit. I would never quit. I'm not a quitter. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers ever show us what they've learned about maneuvering in tight spaces. Okay. So I'm just a bad learner, I guess, is maybe Canada's worst learner. Ever go to retrieve your car from a parking lot only to find that its front bumper's corner is now wearing a fresh coat of someone else's paint? Really? Really, you're gonna do that? Well, the remaining nominees for the title Canada's Worst Driver Ever might be the culprits. To see how well they pull into a tight parking spot, it's time for an annual challenge we call The Cross. The Cross is a simple challenge where drivers must put the nose of this sedan into one parking spot, then another, then a third, and then the fourth. This entire experiment is about S-turns. I want to go wide and then 
turn late. Four back and forth S turns later. Into the one. Doing this entire challenge, I never touch the concrete, I never scrape my paint, and after 40 changes of direction, I successfully complete ah, the cross. My total time is six minutes and five seconds. Can Canada's worst drivers ever figure out this simple steering technique? We're about to find out. Oh, and if they don't, and you see them pull into a parking lot near you, run the other way. Kevin starts by hitting his front bumper. Then he hits his rear bumper, his door, and his wheel. And that's just getting into the first spot. You don't know what you're doing. Don't. During Kevin's entire run, he touches a barrier 25 times. He scrapes door paint four times, and he changes direction 99 times. What? Kevin wants out of the Driver Rehabilitation Center. I personally would like to see Kevin stay till the final three. Dale understands the premise of this challenge. You don't want to hit anything. But... Damn it, damn it. Before long, Dale's hitting two things at once. Where do you think you might be hitting? That corner, maybe? How the hell do you see that? There's no mirrors through that. And what happens next is classic Dale. I'll do it in five minutes. She abandons the point of the challenge and starts driving aggressively. What the hell with it? Dale has mentally left the rehab center. Getting into all four parking spots, she hit barriers 35 times. She scraped door paint 12 times and she changed directions 98 times. There we go, we're done. Right on. Yeah. Dale seems wasted. You really gotta watch those frickin' mirrors. Sly thinks he'll do well at this. I've never had any problem parking, ever. Other than that one time at the gas station. I don't know what happened at that gas station, but judging by this performance, You've been taught all the techniques, but I don't remember any of them. I bet the gas station blew up. Ah. <sighs> Getting into all four parking spaces, Sly hits barriers 44 times, he scrapes door paint 29 times, and he changes direction 142 times. And let's not even talk about how much he sweat. I absolutely suck. <sighs> Sly sucks. It's worth repeating. You suck. Michael will be the final driver. Well, we shall see what happens. What happens is he gets wedged. What? He peels paint. Damn. And he peels out. Crud. Right. From start to finish, Michael hit barriers 31 times. He scraped door paint seven times, and he changed direction 84 times. Did it. Barely, but did it. Doing it shouldn't have resulted in scraped door paint. Yeah, unplanned pinstriping? Redneck pinstriping. Ah, uh, yes, that is the term. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers ever take our limousine on a high-speed slalom run. What in the world? Have you always wanted to be driven in the back of a limo? Woohoo! Well, being in the back of one isn't always the safest place to be, especially if there's a driving emergency. Jeez! And there's about to be a driving emergency because the nominees for Canada's worst driver ever are about to take our stretch limousine on a 70k an hour slalom run. As 
their next challenge. The limo is eight meters long. And the slalom has five turns that must be taken at 70K an hour, just like this. And that's 70. Nothing to it. Staying in control requires tight turns. Michael is up first. Talk to me about inertia, buddy. What do you know? Inertia is the tendency of an object in motion to continue to travel in a straight line at a constant speed unless acted upon by an external force. So what is turning going to do to your inertia? Actually, it won't do anything to it. Turning alters my momentum. So, if you slalom really tight... What's that doing to your momentum? ...versus if you take really wide turns around the people? Obviously, if I stay relatively straight, I'm undergoing smaller accelerations and altering my momentum to a lesser degree. Basic kinematics. Michael often understands complex physics, but he has a hard time performing the task. The first law of physics, written by Sir Isaac Newton, states that an object in motion stays in motion at the same speed and the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Turning is an unbalanced force, and it unbalances Michael. And I didn't even... Okay, off the gas. I was off the gas. Cool. I was cool. completely off the cool. gas. Cool. 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 I know I did something spectacularly wrong, but what, I'm not sure. Earlier this episode, Michael learned that if he lets go of the gas completely, the rear end of his vehicle will lighten as the weight transfers forward. When the back of Michael's limo did lighten because he let off the gas, and his momentum was altered because of his turn, the front wheels retained their traction while his rear spun out of control. This is an inline slalom, minimal steering input, will avoid upsetting the balance of the car. Michael, if Sir Isaac Newton was beamed down to Earth, suddenly here, right now, onto this very location, and he saw this happening, what would he say? You people have been touched by the devil. What is wrong with you? You are insane. Yeah, that, give her. This time when Michael goes, he's got two issues. He again lets go of the gas pedal, and he steers hand over hand, which results in turns that are too wide. Yeah, we were too wide on the initial again. Yeah. Imagine the steering wheel as a clock. If you hold your hands at the nine and three position, you'll never have to let go of the wheel if you suddenly have to swerve at high speed. Watch my run again. My hands are at the nine and three position, and I'm able to steer easily. Hands at nine and three, half a turn of the wheel, that's all you need. Before his final attempt. We're just gonna do a quick mantra moment here. Michael gathers himself by reciting the oath of the blue lantern. In fear-filled days, in raging nights, with strong hearts full, our souls ignite. When all seems lost in the war of light, look to the stars, for hope burns bright. All will be well. All will be well if Michael maintains 70K an hour and keeps his hands on the wheel. Oh, oh good grief. That was just ridiculous. Michael may be Canada's worst driver ever. Here, keep your head in the game. <laughs> yeah, but what about his? Dale lines herself up well wide of the slalom course, which causes a first turn that's so sharp she can't recover from it. Hit the brake, hit the brake. Wow. Did you forget the brake? Dale did forget the brake. Driving through the weeds, she was still hard on the gas pedal. Hit the brake, hit the brake. If you're out of control, try to stop the car quick. You didn't hit the brake. Why would I want to hit the brake? 
Oh, you mean between the people? You know, when we started going but off the road? Like, when we started going off the road? Oh, when we, yeah. You that. were still flooring it. Dale has an explanation for speeding through the weeds. I guess, okay, how can I say this so that you'll understand it and not think that I'm crazy, okay? Um, she can't. Ever see a limo go sideways? Oh, you did, just now? Well, brace yourself, because I have a feeling you're about to see it again. This time, as Dale's headed towards the slalom, she's pulsing on the gas, and when she enters the slalom, she pins it to the floor again. Hit the brick. Yeah. Oh, my God. Something happened to my mind between the second one and the third one. I don't know what. I don't know what. It was just total loss of focus for a few seconds. But those few seconds... Could mean a life. Oh, you betcha. What was it that Shamala told you to say to yourself before you did these difficult challenges? You know, it's something about breathing, and then there was something else she told me, and I don't know what she said, to tell you the truth. I wasn't paying that much attention to her. Dale, that's pretty curious. I gotta tell you, not bothering to focus when you're at a therapy session that you've asked for, that the subject of which is focus. Really, really baffling. Go whenever you're ready, Dale. Last chance to dance, final run. Whoa! Oh, she's going, I gotta run. If Dale doesn't pass this attempt, she'll definitely be in the finals for Canada's worst driver ever. Dale might be Canada's worst driver ever. Yes, no, I, I don't think I'm going to be Canada's worst driver ever because Canada's worst driver ever would be a person that doesn't really give a damn. When we come back, oh, Mary. Kevin and Sly do our limo challenge. It looks like a Smurf massacre, look. Yes. Canada's worst drivers ever are showing us how well they can maintain speed under duress by taking our limousine on a 70k an hour slalom run. Kevin says he's going to hold the steering wheel at... 10 and 2. If Kevin's hands were at 9 and 3, like we taught him, he'd never have to let go of the wheel. See, you're doing the wrong thing in the oh. song. You're going hand over hand. Oh, shoot. If you keep your hands at nine and three, you get through this without ever moving them. Just because you tell Kevin something doesn't mean he can do it. Oh, 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 yeah. See, I panicked there. Ninja hands again. Explain to me what's going to happen this time, Kevin. No ninja hands and smaller turns. He doesn't seem nervous, he doesn't seem anxious, he doesn't seem tense. He just seems like a really crappy driver. You're at 70. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my god. Kevin might have to quit driving. That scared the out of me. Sly gets behind the wheel after nine consecutive failures. Let's hope Sly can figure it out. Whoa, freak. That was definitely not doing it the right way. I think I just kind of got spooked. Well, that makes two of us. I just want you to see. Oh, holy cow. Wow. I should have just braked, his, and then I would have stopped a lot sooner. Say it with me, Sly. What? I might be. I might be 
Canada's worst driver. Canada's worst driver. Ever. 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 Ooh, that's a scary thing to say. Yeah, you're a scary man. <laughs> Kevin says he'll quit driving if he's named Canada's worst driver ever. Sly says he'll see you on the road soon. Run number two. The scariest thing about this run is Sly doesn't know he's hitting with his front bumper. Oh, freak. I couldn't do it. You didn't steer around anything. You just drove through them. Oh, OK. Well, you I don't know. I, I felt like I uh, kind of glanced at it. Glanced? You hit them with your front bumper. OK. okay. Wow. Oh, yeah. That, that blue, look at that okay. blue right there. That's you. That blue so is they, you. Right on the side. I guess that's kind of... That's kinda... not the side. That's your front bumper. It looks like a Smurf massacre. Look. Yes. Sly has been told to hold the wheel at nine and three. Like, what's the right amount to turn? Now, he's trying to determine how much to turn by imagining the wheel as a clock. Yes, we're just trying to figure out uh, at what time we should be doing it. I figure 9 o'clock is a little too too much, maybe 10 o'clock. Sly, if you're trying to decide how far to turn the wheel, thinking about it as a clock face, when you're supposed to drive between things, you are going to fail, fail, fail every single time. Oh. What you need to do is look where you want to go. 10-4. Oh, dear. Sly, last one of the day. I don't feel good about it. About the only mistake that Sly hasn't made on this challenge is hitting the brakes in mid-swerve. But that's what he does this time. Hit the brakes. Oh, oh freak. Oh, that was a disaster. Sly might be Canada's worst driver ever. In a world of bad drivers, Sly is outstanding in his field. Yes. Oh, ironic that we're standing in a field. On this episode of Canada's Worst Driver Ever, we had the nominees perform a forward handbrake turn. We tested their ability to handle a vehicle in tight spaces. And we watched them drive a 70K an hour slalom course in a limousine. I know I did something spectacularly wrong, but what, I'm not sure. Now, the experts and I will decide which three people should be in our final episode. Starting with Kevin. Do you think you're gonna be one of those three people? No. No? Mm-mm. You didn't drive the cross very well, let alone you failed the handbrake turn. Mm -hmm. And then there was the limo. How, how was the limo? The, lim the limo slalom was a disaster. Yeah, so what makes you think that you, you, you're going to not be in the finals? I don't know. I guess I deserve to be in the finals then. I've thought Sly deserves to be in the finals ever since day one. Do you think you deserve to graduate? Um, definitely not this episode. You're going to be in the finals. Michael is who I think should not be in the finals. Do you deserve to be in the final episode for Canada's Worst Driver Ever? I'm inclined to think no. Dale is due to visit us next, but she's not here. After today's final challenge, Dale, who just by pure fluke lives only a one-hour drive from the rehab center, vanished. We've been trying to find her, but she checked out of her hotel, and she isn't answering her phone. When we come back, we managed to locate Dale, and she has a story to tell. You want me to tell you the, the long version or the short version? <laughs> After competing in the last challenge before we name the finalists for Canada's worst driver ever, something happened to my mind. Dale vanished from our rehab center. I really don't think there's anyone who wants to stay here any longer and be one of the dread final three. <laughs> At least nobody's sane. 
even by this show's loose standards of sanity. I resemble that remark. Hours after vanishing, Dale called us back to say that she'd gone home. Now, she's decided to come back to the rehab center so she can explain herself. However, Dale is now sporting a heavily duct taped bandage on her left hand. You okay? Yeah, I'm absolutely great. What's, what happened to your hand? I don't know. Okay, we've been waiting a long time to have this conversation just because uh, we thought you were gonna be here at the end of the show, just like always. And then, uh, you went away? I left for a little while, yes. You went home? Yes. Why'd you go home? Poor personal choice. Why'd you, so you just didn't wanna face the finals? Oh, gosh, no, I wanted to face the finals. No, I said it was a poor personal choice. What happened to your hand? Uh, I severed a tendon in my finger. You severed a tendon? Mm-hmm. How? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You must know how you severed a tendon. I actually don't. Did a shark attack you? I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, maybe a shark attack came into my house and kind of bit me. This was a poor personal choice, and that's really all I got to say about it. How did you get home? Taxi. You took a taxi, a one-hour taxi. When Dale got home, she was locked out. To break in, she smashed some glass, and that glass caught her finger, partially severing a tendon. You tried to break your way into your own home? Oh, uh, yeah, it? well, that was kind of childish. Yeah. That's got nothing to do with the person that I really am. The person that I really am is here. The person uh, that you really are did check out of the hotel and run away. That was really you, right? That was not really me. That wasn't really you? No. Um, sometimes there's reality, and then there's a personal reality. So sometimes your personal reality is different than actual reality. It sure is not. Sometimes. I mean, don't we all have personal realities and then we go into a non-ristic reality? All of us do it, Andrew. It's just at different times. So um, if you're implying that my personal reality is not real, it's real. If you're trying to sit there and tell me there's something wrong with me, then I think that you should rethink that and think that we are all human. Inside of your mind, everyone's mind, something else is going on. When I'm talking to you right now, Cam may be hearing something, and you may be hearing something else, and Tim may be hearing something else. So that's your little reality. The reality is, do not hurt anybody out there. Do not kill anybody out there. And try to learn and grow up with the things that you haven't learned yet. I don't understand what you're saying at all. I know, but let's focus on the driving. Yeah, let's focus on the driving. You can't drive now because you left. You ran away from driver rehab. Oh, so I can't drive anymore because I did that? No, you can't drive anymore because your hand is now bundled up. Yes, that will take about probably six months to clear up. Six months? Probably. You hurt yourself badly. Yeah, but it, it doesn't hurt. Six, six months of recovery? To no, probably not. Maybe two. Maybe two or three. I'm just finding it hard to have this conversation because I feel there's lots of missing pieces and there's a bit of a block where Well, I... if you think... <laughs> no, there's not. Dale says that when her hand heals, she will resume driving. Everyone on the panel thinks that's a bad idea. I think the most helpful thing for you would be to not drive. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I think. The tripping? We're all concerned about your safety and the safety of others on the road. I think it's time you let your husband drive. Thank you for your opinion. Appreciate it. It's only my opinion, but um, I believe that it's just a matter of time before something bad happens. Dale's injury will prevent her from being in the finals of Canada's worst driver ever. Well, that was weird. I think she was absolutely desperate to get out of being in the final three. Yeah. I don't think it should disqualify her. You think she could still be named Canada's worst driver ever? As far as I'm concerned, in my mind, I'm still going to consider her. 
I think she is somebody that uh, should not be driving. I think her license should be reviewed, and I hope the Minister of Transport watches this show and deals with this. Can the Ministry of Transport watch the show and deal with it? Like yeah. That's beyond their jurisdiction. No, right? they have the legal authority. The Highway Traffic Act uh, says that you have to uh, drive safely and demonstrate that you will drive safely. It's pretty obvious to anyone watching this show, even a minister, there's a problem here. So does anybody graduate this episode? They've got no legal right to cut off your license. Well, just when you thought things couldn't get any weirder here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center, things take an unexpected leap to the even more bizarre end of the spectrum. Dale, let's talk. Just a couple hours ago, I was pretty certain that you would absolutely be in the finals for Canada's worst driver ever. But then, you cut and run, didn't you? So, unfortunately, this is gonna happen. Dale, I'm pretty sure that anybody in Canada who's watching this show would be more than horrified to see me give you your license back. So, that's not gonna happen. I'll do it. Don't do what? Don't you dare. Cut up. This? Don't do this? Don't do that? <laughs> Is that my license? That's your license, Dale. I don't have the legal authority to cut no, your license don't. up. That's right. Yeah. But I wish I did. Too bad. You're not. You don't. And so, whatever. Whatever? It is what it is. Well, I said I wouldn't give you your license back, and I won't. I'll give it to Danny. Okay. Danny, you want to take this, please? And I'm going to ask Danny to drive you home. Okay? Sounds good. Thanks, buddy. And thanks for bringing her. I really appreciate it, man. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Dale. I Bye, hope that you don't drive more in the future. The experts and I all, all agree. For your own safety, we, we're, we like you. We're concerned yeah, for right. you. you like me. I do like Dale, but I'd like her a whole lot more if she quit driving. Dale has been driving for 30 years. And when we met her in season six, she habitually broke the law. If no one sees you, it's not illegal. Oh, my God. And she admitted to scratching cars in parking lots about once a week. 50 weeks in a year times 30 years, you're talking 1,500 small scratches? Pretty much. Oh, whoa, whoa. Ah! This vulgar behavior was made possible by her financially supportive husband. Generally, uh... You know, the people come up with a, with a figure, and if I think it's reasonable, then I'll just pay it. Back in season six, Dale failed more challenges than anyone else. My cats won't even go in the car with me. And she thought her dangerous driving was funny. <laughs> get ya. Hey, 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 hey! This year in rehab, Dale exhibited the memory of a goldfish. It's new every time, isn't it? Yes, it is. And the driving skills of a goldfish. Oh, my God. But as bad as she is, Dale has a message for the motorists of St. Catharines. Yes, I am absolutely going to keep driving. Bye-bye, Dale. Please don't drive. Please don't drive ever. Who is Canada's worst driver ever? We'll find out after the three remaining nominees drive me in public next episode. Well, let me tell you, if he had tried to do that with my license, I'd sue his ass. On the next and final episode of Canada's worst driver ever. This turn doesn't turn fast enough. The three remaining nominees wrap up their rehab center experience with our annual mega challenge. 
stupid, stupid, stupid. Then... There's a guy there, you're not in the left turn lane. They hit the public streets of Hamilton with me as their passenger. You're comfortable making this merge? Oh, yes. There will be crimes committed. Ah, crud. There will be unintentional games of chicken. You're in the oncoming traffic lane, dude. And there will be tears. I'm gonna get the title. <laughs> then somebody will be named Canada's worst driver ever? I'm confused.